Okay, Michele. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is a real pleasure to be here for an event which has been taking place uh, for five years now, and we are very proud of. Uh, the topic of the session is the development of insurance market and the new risk scenario after COVID with the social protection and investment opportunities. Let me introduce our panelists, Safet Kozarevic, Professor of Faculty of Economics at the University of Tuzla, Darko Bosevsky, Insurance Supervision Agency, Skopje, North Macedonia. Luciano Cirina, Austria, CE and Russia Regional Officer for Generali. Sami Mazreku, Insurance Association of Kosovo. Irvoy Epokovic, Insurance Association of Croatia. And our keynote speaker, Dario Focarelli, General Manager of Anya, Italian Insurers Association. Let me give you some brief background on our topic. There are pre existing structural trends. Uh, for insurer, for the sector. First of all, life and health are undergoing significant changes in technology, demography, disease patterns, and of course, uh, uh, low rates. Uh, we know they are very persistent. Uh, the, the business model is, uh, is shifting um, also through uh, long, long, let me say, lifelong financial and physical well being. Also, the rising of public uh, deficits uh, are basically diminish state contributions to health and so creating some opportunities. Of course, COVID accelerate uh, part of these uh, trends. In particular, we see direct impact on no life. For the time being, they are quite limited. Also, our evidence in France and Germany tell this story, even if uh, there is a still a high uncertainty uh, because uh, we know better how things are only in Q2 results, when, when the results will be known, and also in H2 2020, we will know better. We are referring to event cancellation and travel, uh, trade credit, uh, basic income, lapsation, interruption, discontinuity of contribution behavior by policy holders, and also the third party liabilities, which uh, takes time uh, to develop and to become uh, clearer. We have, of course, indirect impacts. Uh, these are uh, related to financial market fluctuations, to losses in, in the assets, especially in the life segment, and also due to surrender and uh, lapsation. Of course, we have uh, experiencing uh, uh, an increase in risk aversion, in particular for the unit uh, lean case, uh, so representing a concern for traditional life business. Of course, uh, we have also an issue of uh, capitalization, in particular solvency. Let me say that big operators more or less are safe in uh, Europe, but of course, uh, smaller operators represent a question marks in terms of capital and solvency sustainability in, uh, indirectly. Um, we are seeing some reduced business, new business due to physical interaction, which is not viable as before, limited possibility to switch, the shift in demand from unique to uh, traditional, of course, a higher risk aversion, and also some uh, asset management outflows. Last but not least, uh, we have the reduction of propensity to consume insurance products by uh, SMEs, so smaller, smaller firms. On the other side, uh, we have opportunities, of course, in health and in long-term care. So, expect the trends that we should be ready for are overall the digital use, the consumer data economy, the internet of things, and the risk management attached to that to avoid the reputational risks. So this is attached also in part to, to ESG, if you want. Reduce needs of mobility, delivery, and changing household living pattern spaces. This is a big change for the, for the future. And also given digital infrastructure, the de-urbanization pattern that we are assisting right now and also in the future, which are the two increasing longevity and also new and additional saving patterns. And of course, long, low interest rates environment, uh, which of course are linked to the new monetary policy, which have become more, even more aggressive uh, than before. So uh, let me give, we, we will have three questions, but let me give uh, the word to our keynote speaker, Dario Focarelli. 
Thank you. I'm just putting the, the slides on. So hope, hope you are able to, to look at. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. And second, uh, thank you, Michele, for your introduction. You basically touched the, all points that I'm going to discuss. So uh, I will be uh, brief in a, in a, a number of them uh, and maybe a bit more uh, long on, on, on just a few of them. Uh, my presentation, uh, sorry. Uh, my presentation uh, uh, is uh, a two-fold presentation, but basically I will skip the first one, uh, the first part, uh, since uh, in, in, the, in the initial uh, um, panel was discussed a lot by Dr. Galateri and other, and, and other panelists, so I'm not going through the macroeconomic uh, environment, uh, ju just uh, I want to emphasize two things. First of all, uh, it's not obvious that uh, financial markets recovered uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, the, the, the lowest, lowest point uh, uh, they, they uh, touched on uh, mid-March. Um, there is a lot of, of indicators that say we have to be prudent for the future. Uh, second one is, has been a, a second thing that I want to uh, emphasize is that uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what already uh, Mr. Uh, Rogoff, Professor Rogoff uh, pointed out, uh, we don't know how long it will last, but we already know that uh, has been uh, uh, the, the, the uh, deepest dive uh, on a global economy. And uh, if it's going to be a long story, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, it will be the mother of all financial crises. So uh, we are much more positive now than we were uh, um, three or four weeks ago. But to be honest, uh, uh, I mean, we should be very, very prudent. Uh, one important thing on a macroeconomic point of view, and this is also related with the role of insurance, is that uh, uh, all governments are sharply increasing the, uh, the debt. And uh, is this debt uh, sustainable? Uh, this is a very difficult question. The answer, and this is not my answer, but is Professor Blanchard's answer, is that uh, yes, it can be sustainable, but there are two, two basic uh, question marks. Unfortunately, one is Italy, uh, because it's the, 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 um, the, the biggest country with the highest level of, uh, of uh, debt over GDP. And then uh, other big question mark is for uh, emerging markets, for a number of reasons that obviously I'm not going now to, to, to analyze. Uh, and uh, uh, last point on microeconomic point of view is the role for coordination. I mean, uh, I'm sure that uh, we need uh, a coordination. This is important at the global level. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, coordination is highly desirable, but also very difficult to achieve. There are a number of examples. Uh, fortunately, at least at the European level, uh, it seems that we were able to overcome the difficulties uh, we were, um, we were uh, encapsulated uh, until uh, until uh, months ago, uh, but uh, this is uh, this is a very difficult uh, <clears throat> uh, objective to to achieve. And uh, more important, the geopolitical divergences uh, are very important in this moment, uh, and it is not obvious how to how to overcome them. Uh, uh, let's move to the second part, uh, and uh, and the second part the title is uh, insurance should be part of the solution. Uh, first of all, uh, let me discuss uh, in a moment uh, what has been a, a discussion over all Europe, count, uh, European countries, uh, mm, whether or not uh, uh, insurance has been defined in essential services. In most countries, this has been the case. Italy is one of them. Um, in other, no. Uh, there is a one positive side on this discussion. Uh, the social role of insurance is definitely reinforced. There is also a negative side. I mean, uh, in some countries, the idea is that uh, uh, insurance could be considered as uh, 
uh, as a public uh, utility, not as a well, uh, well functioning private market. And this is something that is important. Uh, we had a um, number of countries uh, and uh, uh, from different political parties, uh, very strong push in order to pay something that uh, uh, we were not supposed to pay. And uh, I mean, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is something uh, uh, very important. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, in all over um, the world, there has been some pressure uh, that the insurance industry is not going to pay if, uh, uh, if the contracts say not to pay. Obviously, different thing is when the contracts ask for payment. Uh, but uh, uh, let's move to let's move to uh, insurance companies, uh, and uh, here is uh, uh, just one of the uh, uh, various uh, uh, slides that uh, a consultant uh, uh, were able to produce in this period. Uh, and uh, basically, the idea is that uh, we should do something uh, immediate. We should do something in the first three months, and basically, I would say that. Uh, Everything has been uh, done and achieved, and then uh, we should have our our uh, our business model vaccinated uh, to to the COVID. Uh, and this is obviously more more difficult. Uh, there are obviously a number of things that are very important. Uh, I will uh, underline, uh, review, and adjust customer strategies, and uh, uh, I also would uh, underline. Uh, uh, such a evolve uh, uh, digital distribution models uh, as a key points. Um, I do not have time to go through, uh, but uh, in the last uh, <clears throat> few minutes, uh, I want to uh, just to comment two, uh, I mean, such points uh, on uh, what we learn from uh, from uh, the COVID uh, crisis, especially in in March, and then and then a uh, uh, few remarks for the future. Uh, so, what we learned in, in March and uh, 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 were basically two things. Such crises uh, uh, have an important, ma might have an important uh, effect on uh, liquidity position of the market and, uh, and on the solvency one. So, uh, on the liquidity, it, 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 it is possibly the most surprising aspect because, uh, I mean, insurance. Uh, is not subject as a, as a banking industry to, to liquidity uh, problems for the very simple reason that we uh, we cash in uh, premiums and uh, and then we have uh, claims. However, we discovered uh, in March that uh, um, we can have we can have some problem, especially <coughs> in some uh, in some markets uh, uh, where uh, there was a, a quite a High exposure to the derivative markets and uh, uh, linked products uh, with uh, a quite high uh, portion of assets uh, as illiquid assets, and, uh, and so in case of lasting from from the uh, the customer, obviously we the company were were subject to to <clears throat> uh, some some problem on liquidity. Uh, but but more generally, uh, uh, our industry like a uh, Many other businesses, obviously, uh, is experience uh, a sharp decline in new business. Fortunately, now is better than uh, it was in March and April. But still, uh, we are not uh, we are not at the same level as we were before. Uh, we have some late and suspension payments from policyholders, and uh, while we are meeting our commitments on time uh, and uh, offering uh, uh, liquidity and support to our agents and clients. So uh, liquidity uh, might be uh, an issue. Uh, this is the reason why at the European level, uh, <coughs> EOPA and now uh, in, from yesterday, also yesterday, we are, are asking to uh, companies to, to be very careful on liquidity um, position. Uh, here I conclude with, with a one question, a general question. Do insurance companies need to access to the central bank facility? Um, I cannot exclude in the future. Uh, I don't see at the moment uh, the need, but generally speaking, uh, uh, given, given the, the, the sharp in, uh, increase in the role of the insurance market in the financial markets, I think is something that we should analyze for the future. And second point is the solvency position of the insurance market. 
uh, we uh, we are in Europe. Uh, we are proud of, of our uh, solvency two uh, system, which we believe is the most sophisticated one in the world. Uh, however, we are realizing uh, very um, quickly that solvency two is very very uh, prone uh, to emphasize uh, volatility problems in the financial markets. And uh, we had uh, huge fluctuations uh, uh, in, in, in the SCR ratio, uh, the, the main indicator of, of the solvency position of a, of a, of a company. So, uh, and there is one particular uh, topic that is very important is the volatility adjustment. So. Uh, we knew them, uh, uh, we, we knew that before the crisis, uh, and we do believe that we should, uh, uh, we should act. Uh, we have a review uh, undergoing at the, at the European level, it's the so-called uh, 2020 uh, Solvency II review. Uh, it's now unrealistic to finish on time. Uh, I mean, we should uh, uh, really, uh, as a Europeans, uh, think whether it's not uh, is, is, is a good idea to have a fix, uh, a quick fix approach uh, to solvency two in order to have a more comprehensive uh, uh, review uh, later on uh, in the future. Um, uh, finally, challenges for the future, just two slides uh, and uh, four points. First of all, uh, uh, one, uh, one, uh, and these are, are basically the four points that uh, I think are crucial for, for the future in, in, in our market, together to, with the, 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 the digitalization of distribution and digitalization of our business. So first of all, making healthcare more available and, and accessible, we are uh, in the, uh, evaluating and experiencing a sharp increase in demand for health coverage. Uh, this is a worldwide, uh, uh, worldwide uh, trend and uh, we should be able to do that. Uh, it's not easy uh, and uh, a pandemic risk uh, uh, showed us that we can uh, have a very uh, horrible situation but uh, still we should, uh, we should uh, uh, try. And one important uh, uh, key driver on this is uh, telehealth services. I mean uh, we discovered that telehealth is very important and, uh, and the insurance business is uh, uh, leader uh, around the world in order to, to use the telehealth services uh, uh, attached to the, to, the, uh, to the insurance coverage. So this is something very important for us. Second is develop products covering epidemics. I mean, this is very difficult, almost impossible. Uh, Mr. Galadelli already underline that uh, this is something that uh, we are discussing uh, at the global level but also at the European level and, and at the national level. Um, obviously this is something impossible uh, as an industry alone. Uh, we should uh, have a, a partnership with the, with the governments and possibly with the supranational authorities and banks. Uh, but uh, we should do something on, on it. Uh, the lesson we learn is that uh, we should make uh, uh, our business and our f uh, families and households more protected against the effect of pandemics. And the insurance industry should be part of the, of the activity in order to, to do that. Uh, the third point is uh, uh, we, we will have uh, a lower for long rate environment because central banks are going to monetize a lot of, 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 of the increase of the, the, the public debt uh, all over the world and, and we should couple uh, this environment, uh, the difficulties of such environment with the difficulty to offer better protection to all the people. Uh, we should do something. Uh, I feel, and this is my claim, that we should be able to have hybrid products uh, able to, uh, to, to, to obtain a, a mixture of, of uh, protection and financial, financial savings uh, uh, feature. So uh, this is something that in the future will be uh, a key uh, for the life business, uh, a, a key topic for the life business uh, uh, all over the world. And finally, as a Europeans, uh, we should 
support a comprehensive recovery plan at the EU level and uh, integrating uh, green transition and digital transformation. Uh, but obviously we should meet uh, uh, both the financial obligation and the finan a fiduciary duty that we have with our clients. So uh, it's very important that regulation allow insurance companies to do that. Crucial point is, uh, is the solvency to review I already told before and the second and final point is that maybe we should give tax incentives to final investors who accept a given degree of liquidity. This is important because the new rules both at the insurance industry and the banking level basically does not allow insurance company and, and also banks to uh, the so-called maturity transformation. And then we need maturity transformation for our clients. So uh, possibly uh, tax subsidies can help this process. Thank you very much. I just finished and uh, obviously willing to participate to the, any comments uh, in the future. Thank you. Dario, Dario you touched very important points. Uh, I will go, we are quite late, so I go through the, the three questions. Uh, remember that uh, your panelists have uh, three minutes each. Uh, to answer the first question is uh, uh, what is the infection with hard impacts of covid uh, so intensity and dynamic in your in your country in terms of macroeconomic variables in terms of insurance business so also in terms of distribution and also the role of regulators so the floor is your remember three minutes each please Uh, should I start? Uh, thank you, Michelle. Um, uh, thank you. And uh, um, I already had a spe speech before on the session of banking, so I will just give short comments regarding your questions and hard impacts. Generally, for the region, you cannot say that it's uh, let's say it's it of the of the of the uh, virus about infection. Infection rate is not very high. We have uh, approximately for the region about one person per, per thousand inhabitants, so it's not high level. Uh, but uh, the problems are much bigger in the economic field, of course. We had star started to feel the consequences uh, in January when the import from China uh, declined and after that we had situation in Italy and Germany, which are very, very important partners for the countries of this region. And after that, we had uh, in, in March, in the middle, middle March, uh, when the World Health Organization uh, announced the, the pandemic, the economy started, uh, authorities started to introduce measure uh, to pro, uh, pre precautionary measures to uh, stop the economic activities, risky economic activities, what increased unemployment, uh, decrease in the public uh, incomes, uh, the problem of for stabilization of economy that is the highest for all governments. They need actually sources to uh, implement the measures in order to stabilize uh, economies. They actually introduce, introduce some measures in the sense of the prolonging or uh, interrupt, uh, terminate, uh, decreasing tax in, uh, obligations and the other obligations toward states. They introduce different regulations. For example, in Bosnia, they introduce a special law. We call it Corona laws. It's a lot of measures, but uh, the main one is uh, how to how to uh, provide subsidies to the companies and to the employees of the companies uh, to pay as uh, contributions for social uh, uh, social insurance for them, uh, for all companies who suffered from the uh, uh, restrictive measures introduced by governments. And generally for all uh, countries, it is expected a general uh, in 2020 uh, drop in the, in the GDP. Uh, th that will be a short uh, comment for the first qu question. For me. Okay, thank you. Okay, may I may join? Hello, uh, 
Well, the estimations are that the growth of the GDP in Northern Macedonia will be negative from minus uh, four to minus seven, but still difficult to estimate um, the level due to unknown duration and intensity of the COVID-19 crisis. The public deficit is increasing and uh, for that purpose, a new euro bond was issued uh, in uh, 700 million euros recently in order to support the budget execution and the new debt at the moment might approach the 60 percentages of the GDP. Over 15,000 jobs have been lost in three months, making over 121,000 unemployed at the end of May. Uh, the insurance business faces decreased sales, especially in uh, non-life uh, lines of uh, business connected with transport and traveling. No effect uh, is uh, noted on health insurance since it's small in scope and coverage and public uh, health is taking the burden with the COVID-19 crisis. Life insurance uh, hasn't faced the consequences yet in these three months that we are following, but we expect increased level on uh, surrenders, luxations, and capitalization till the end of the year. Uh, the insurance provision agency has introduced regular weekly reporting from the insurance companies and occasional querying for additional reporting uh, on different uh, issues. Uh, has postponed uh, the supervisory reporting uh, um, while the state of emergency period and has postponed on-site uh, supervision. The screening showed a couple of common problems, such as unpaid uh, uh, gross return premium receivables for a longer uh, period with increased possibility of default, uh, not sufficient fund to cover the technical uh, reserves, uh, the coverage and possibility to break the time limit set by the law for claim processing uh, due to decreased regular function of the insurance companies. Uh, uh, the insurance supervision agency has taken into consideration all of these questions uh, and has made changes in three bylaws uh, that enable to the end of the year the following uh, 60 days are added to the impairment scale of the gross return premium receivables. Uh, those receivables are accepted as uh, allowed instruments uh, to cover technical uh, provisions up to 10 percentages uh, from the reserves and uh, the period of two days has been uh, um, made five days uh, for uh, uh, for making the initial reserve uh, of the claim settlement. Thank you. Thank you. Luciano, you are in mute. Luciano, you are in mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. So, thank God uh, and we managed to manage technology, which as we saw and we heard uh, so far has been a key to managing this, uh, this crisis so far. Uh, let me start uh, before starting uh, with macroeconomic uh, facts with the first uh, tangible uh, uh, effect of uh, the crisis, just to give you a feeling for us that this region uh, is uh, apart uh, from Austria all the way uh, to Russia, including the sort of uh, most uh, or many of the ex Yugoslavian countries, the Visegrad for and Bulgaria and Romania. So, a really a broad variety of uh, situations and markets. But I think the, the, the biggest challenge was. Uh, to follow the warnings uh, that we had as a group, as, uh, as, uh, as you remember yourself, Michele, where we started uh, a sort of lockdown before the official uh, and the governments reacted in order to, to protect uh, our, uh, our um, staff uh, and our agents. And we started immediate communication on this. And uh, especially on the COVID side, we had uh, in some of the bigger countries 
even a call center supporting uh, non clients uh, of uh, generally on this matter but with this uh, with this lockdown which eventually became uh, became uh, official and with a different degree of uh, severity in the different countries i think overall uh, we must say that we can thank uh, uh, the governments that have reacted uh, very heavily and very very soon. I mean, uh, we were the, uh, suffered. Uh, sorry if I call you by Christian name. I hope you don't um, apologize. Don't uh, take it personal, but I think it's much more uh, easy. It's uh, we had uh, numbers of uh, of uh, contagion which are uh, the highest in the region: Austria and Serbia, 1.7, uh, 1.9 per mil down uh, to Croatia and Slovakia with uh, below even below 0 0.4 per mil i mean we have to 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 thank uh, to thank the governments uh, certainly also uh, divine intervention because it's certainly not only up to the governments but we are talking about a completely different pandemic situation compared to Spain or Italy which are we are we're talking 4 to 5 per mil uh, contagion uh, we have been uh, we have been also we, to a certain degree lucky that most uh, not all but most of the countries in the region have a good debt and uh, budget situation so there was a possibility to intervene with uh, with fiscal uh, with uh, aid uh, to 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 the economy and uh, the uh, the peak uh, down as uh, as we said it will be uh, important we estimate uh, in excess or around 15% uh, uh, more or less around uh, the region for, for on a year on year uh, nevertheless uh, uh, for next year we expect in many countries not in all uh, but uh, a certain recovery how quick how strong uh, that will uh, it's uh, it's uh, in the in the stars uh, yet and one uh, positive uh, positive uh, uh, aspect in this uh, situation is the employment i mean definitely yes we will have a hit on employment uh, we still have to understand uh, the impact on the productive industry especially smes of this crisis so how they will open will they open how will be the the demand for them Nevertheless, uh, this heat has arrived in a moment of uh, almost full employment in many of the countries of the regions, and certainly in the in the bigger ones. So, the impact uh, is will there is uh, is there. We will certainly also see uh, some cost containment uh, measures of all uh, economic operators on the market, but it should be. Uh, a, a bit uh, a bit better than uh, had it come a couple of years uh, a few years earlier. Uh, let me come quickly to insurance, uh, not to uh, extend too much my time. Uh, we have seen across the region uh, a resistance and release, resilience of the import portfolios in uh, non life, uh, and. Uh, for the magnitude of the heat, also a very limited uh, single digit uh, move in lapses and, uh, and surrenders. Of course, uh, given the, the lockdown and in some countries curfew, uh, we, see, we saw a deterioration of new business, uh, especially in the, in the heavy part uh, of restrictions nevertheless almost everywhere now that uh, in most countries we see a reopening it is coming back uh, to to normal uh, levels i do not uh, mention but i think is uh, of course known and more than evident the the biggest impact uh, was on the financial returns and this is something which is not only specific to to the insurance industry but definitely uh, especially life insurance has been uh, jeopardized by, the, by this event. Uh, one comment uh, to the claims, because uh, as, uh, as uh, Dario Focarelli mentioned, uh, there was some political pressure and some uh, uh, ideas uh, how to, let's say, manipulate uh, the contractual uh, framework. We've seen, yes, uh, a decrease in frequency, for instance, in motor due to the lack of, uh, of traffic 
nevertheless, in the moment, uh, at least a partial open up uh, was uh, given, we went back uh, and quite rapidly to pre-crisis, uh, pre-COVID uh, levels. So this uh, man, it was not a manna for insurers. Uh, and definitely in some, uh, in some areas like travel insurance uh, or bankruptcy of travel insurance uh, or travel agencies, or e even the business interruption, which is not so widespread in the region, but uh, Austria is certainly a sophisticated market for that. Uh, we have seen uh, a rise in claims and, and also as, uh, as uh, in more Western and bigger markets, a pressure to pay what should not uh, be paid. Thank God, and there I would uh, really uh, say chapeau to the regulators of the region, the regulators uh, took a, a very strong stance on this issue saying the insurance industry has to pay what is in the contract. We don't see them uh, as, uh, as uh, a bankomat uh, where we should, a cash dispenser where we should, uh, should pay for, uh, for uh, on the a last word on the on the on the client, uh, well, um, they, there will be a situation uh, of uh, disruption. Certainly, uh, the demand for health, especially long-term health, will come. But uh, but I would like to leave the floor now to the next, uh, and uh, we can certainly come back to these points uh, later. Okay, thank you, Luciano. Any other answer on this? Okay, if not, uh, I, yeah. got... I could maybe say a word. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, uh, it's nice to be among you and participate in this webinar. Of course, what are the impacts regarding the COVID crisis? If I could tell a couple of aspects regarding creation insurance market or the economy, of course, uh, we expect a severe impact. Uh, for, for instance, our economy is largely based on tourism industry, which is, represents about 20% of our GDP. And we have some effects uh, definitely as we see it now in the season, uh, summer season especially, and it will also definitely reflect on the economy. In the sector of economy, we expect, uh, unfortunately, a decrease in GDP this year around 10%, which is going to be very a strong effect uh, on the whole society as such. Of course, um, our, our, regarding the insurance market, we have to also stress that the impact has not been significant yet because we always get the impact a little late uh, as we had it with the crisis in 2008. So this will also have to monitor something in the fall, in the winter, and especially next year. Due to, for example, decrease in just uh, rent-a-car fleets, marine fleets, uh, by significant tens of thousands of cars or, or uh, boats uh, in insurance, we will definitely notice uh, a, a strong decrease in this respect. Unfortunately, uh, life business is not as good as it was, of course, due to uh, low interest rate environment and, of course, the, the trust of the consumers. But on the loan life side, we also see some slight uh, decrease, especially in motor business. Uh, we also, of course, have some decline in claims, but this is also probably te temporary. We also applaud the regulatory approach in terms of IOPA statement that no retroactive coverage is possible. And we are strongly conducting a battle on the European front in terms of uh, potential voices for premium payback. Uh, we, of course, do not support it. And of course, hopefully our regulators has the same opinion. We do really think that the goodwill measures that have been undertaken by the insurance industry have been uh, really significant in terms of uh, premium payment delay uh, and uh, all kinds of actions that have been done in order to help the consumers uh, really go through this very difficult and tough period. We are in constant communication with our regulator and we are, of course, hoping to prevent this premium payback issue. Another aspect which is very significant for our market is the earthquake that hit Zagreb. Unfortunately, it's a relatively severe earthquake for us, 5.5, uh, and we have damages approximately in terms of uh, 10 billion euros. Uh, 
luckily for the insurance industry, a lot of it was not covered by insurance. So this also somehow creates maybe an opportunity for the future, but also creates uh, a certain dissatisfaction from the consumers that some of them have not, of course, insured the earthquake uh, risk. And hopefully this will trigger a more insurance density and penetration in the future. Unfortunately, this will also uh, help uh, or hinder the growth of the economy. And this is something that we see for the future as a problem. That is why we are still struggling what our premium insurance growth is going to be uh, next year. And, and this year we are expecting, of course, decline uh, roughly probably by 10%. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think we have to go to the to the second uh, question quite rapidly. We are late. So uh, focus on solvency capital uh, solidity. So basically there is a large non-negligible pressure for uh, smaller players. So do you see possible effects in terms of market selection consolidation? This is the question. Luciano, do you want to to take the word on that? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, let me uh, start from, uh, uh, as the Dario Fogarelli was mentioning, there is, of course, a volatility uh, in the solvency to regime. Nevertheless, exactly because of this, uh, of this uh, uh, task, of this, uh, of this uh, role, it was uh, chosen like this to show the resilience of, uh, of the companies and uh, regulators in most countries have uh, taken steps to guarantee the level of, uh, of solvency. Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, uh, we went down from 224 uh, to uh, 196, which is significant. We still remain uh, as some of the main competitors among uh, the highest uh, in, in Europe. Uh, but I think what is more important is uh, for the clients is not uh, so much uh, the relevance uh, uh, on m a which is uh, a bit uh, connected not only to the solvency, and I'll come back to that. I think uh, clients should realize that uh, the minimum price is not, uh, is not everything. Uh, it, uh, if we choose uh, as client, as customer, a, an insurer, and I, I'm saying uh, uh, as generally, but that applies also to many of our competitors who are proper competitors, uh, is to choose the solidity of the insurer, not only the price. Is my insurer gonna pay the claim if we have a crisis? And will my insurer survive if there is a crisis? And I think it is fundamental uh, that, uh, that insurers uh, take care of a proper uh, careful asset allocation of investments, a responsible cash flow management, uh, to, to make sure that we have a, a prudent approach uh, uh, within a, an appropriate risk man management framework. And last but not least, uh, tr trivial in insurance industry, but a proper reserving. And uh, we've seen in, in the last years uh, that in some countries we had bankruptcies and uh, the, even of large players and the market had to pay for it. Customers had uh, claims not paid. And uh, I think these cases are not only a financial strain, a social strain, but are a reputational uh, uh, risk and a dent to the trust of our clients into the whole industry. So I hope that this, uh, that this crisis shows to the client, to certain regulator that is needed uh, to, to take action, and, uh, and that uh, we avoid uh, having uh, these, uh, these problems. Thank you, Luciano. Is there any other contribution to this question? Okay, just, just shortly. Uh, you have to keep in mind that this, I'm talking about Southeastern European market. We have to keep in mind that this is underdeveloped part of the insurance market of Europe. And regarding the solvency and the others, uh, the, the, probably the, the, the most, the biggest uh, advantage of this market is that it is mostly based on uh, obligatory insurance, MTPL, since uh, since it's mandatory and uh, 
they still don't feel uh, as uh, so huge impacts of the of the crisis in the sense of the solvency, the solvency and capital adequacy. But uh, since most of them are still not in the solvency two regime, in many countries we still have solvency one and some steps of implementation of solvency uh, two, uh, for, especially for the countries who are not the members of the European Union, uh, we we will probably have very uh, uh, uncertain uh, period in the future regarding these issues. So it will be very, of course, depending of the intensity of the crisis in the in the future, how long it will last. So, so th this issue is very very important for the for the region uh, is regional insurers. That's short. Okay, thank you, Safed. If I just may add something. Uh, just one maybe aspect regarding folk uh, solvency capital solidity. Uh, there has been numerous attempts across Europe regarding the ban on dividend payment. And this is maybe a, an interesting aspect uh, in Croatia as such. We are one of the first countries that had a regulatory ban on payment of dividends for almost a year till next spring. Uh, it is something that triggered the wide discussion across Europe and I think it's an important aspect that we have to bear in mind. Yes, of course, uh, solvency positions and capitalization has to be sufficient, but there are some numerous aspects uh, that uh, this might be, uh, should have been maybe uh, uh, an instruction, not a ban. And this is something that is ongoing throughout Europe. And this is something that regu regulators try to preserve the capital position of the insurance players. I don't know if it's a good way to do it, but it has been done on several markets. And this is something that we also need to bear in mind that this will strengthen the position. But I think prudent uh, capital regimes that are already in place through solvency are uh, more than enough and sufficient that the industry will hold and of course perform to the consumers and to the clients. I would like to also um, yeah. uh, give just a short comment, uh, taking into consideration the previous two um, speakers. It's a similar situation in Northern Macedonia. So I believe that the insurance uh, sector is well capitalized to absorb the pressure due to, let's say, underdeveloped uh, factors, Ms. Uh, Professor Kozarevich said. So we see a little decrease of uh, premium in the last three months and some companies have increased also uh, a decrease in claim uh, payment although this uh, indicator is quite volatile at the moment uh, but uh, as uh, Mr. Pokovic give example we as a regulator used the soft skill to encourage uh, say OPA uh, said to the insurers not to pay dividends and at the end uh, it happened like that. They decided not to pay it, almost all of them and not to pay the dividends uh, and to increase the reserves uh, with it. So I believe that uh, the solvency and capital solidity won't be triggered and no consolidations will be made till the end of the year. Thank you. Okay. Perhaps we move, uh, if there are no other interventions, that uh, we move rapidly uh, to the third question. The third question basically is uh, split it in two. So basically we have two topics and you can answer what you feel more comfortable on. One is ESG. Uh, so do you see, uh, is possible to combine investment opportunities with socially responsible investment policies? That's the first question. And, and the second is on, uh, Technology, which is the role of di digitalization in your country and also cybersecurity uh, for the long-term sustainability of the digital platforms. So do you see that as a, as a key uh, trend in your countries in terms of supplying insurance products, healthcare business and challenges? I mean, 
Safet, you were studying or no? Uh, okay, just shortly uh, regarding ESG, social investments, it's a very interesting field of the, of the investment, but uh, I, I'm always talking about Southeastern Europe. Uh, as you know, this region is bank-centric region and investment potential of the insurers is not too high. It's, in co it's not in comparable with banks. Uh, but generally, uh, the, 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 probably this uh, situation with coronavirus is uh, opportunity to prepare something uh, like that to provide, uh, how we say it, uh, double bottom line, uh, actually to find the product that will be on one side uh, to be profitable for the company. And in the case of outbreaks, it will be uh, this profit motive will align with the for the good for the society. So the insurers are actually uh, generally in, in the region have problem how to bring the coronavirus brings a lot of new challenges and it's problem how to adapt the activities to the new environment. Uh, the problem is uh, if you're talking about new products as uh, uh, Mr. Focarelli said, the insurance should be the part of the solution for the, for the problem, but uh, how, how they can do it in this environment with this old situation. So there is a problem how to uh, provide new product if we don't have statistics, uh, for example, for uh, pandemic uh, risks. We don't have statistics to calculate premium. Uh, if uh, we don't have, uh, we need actually uh, measures how to reduce or transfer risks. We have to collaborate. Uh, we have to collaborate with the reinsurance. They have to make a, a product that will be up. Uh, uh, you know that the market will accept. It will be probably uh, more ex expensive at the beginning, but that the market. Uh, uh, grow, uh, the, the, the price will go down. So it's it's uh, a lot of uh, opportunities, but for this, as the Darko said uh, from North Macedonia, we have a lot of, uh, uh, on Mr. Paukovic, we have uh, many other problems. Uh, so there is not too much space for ESG and these the social responsible investment in this region, but we have to think and uh, try to connect pandemic crisis with these investment opportunities. That's short. Thank you, thank you. I, I would like just to say briefly on this ESG criteria. I very personally like very much the ESG investment criteria, although it hasn't been present in our country, neither with insurance companies nor in general. And I think it should come as a uh, um, top-down uh, 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 approach uh, and the state should encourage it as a, a sustainable goal like this UN-backed sustainable stock exchanges. So I believe that on that way it can uh, become part of the reality step by step. That's my opinion. I wouldn't go on the technological answer because I would reach the time that is very short. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Masraiko, do you have something to refer to us concerning the topics of technology and insurance and uh, ESG? Okay, if not, uh, is there anybody else? Wanted to intervene on this topic? Yes, a quick uh, on both, a very quick uh, because uh, we are uh, 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 go, uh, quite far over the time. But on ESG, I, I fully agree with, with Safet. Uh, the market is not yet there, the investment opportunity is not there. But I think it is important to recognize trends and the way forward, and we must facilitate it. Uh, oh, um, my region, even the most, uh, let's say, Western part, is not yet as far as other countries in uh, in Western Europe. Nevertheless, uh, especially in the younger generation, you see a, ma a much bigger sens sensibility and sensitivity to these uh, subjects. So we are moving overall as a group our investments uh, more and more to the ESG. We have cut investments in companies who have poor records in, on that side. And uh, we have even set up uh, a, a human safety net organization foundation to invest actively in socially uh, and, uh, 
ethical uh, uh, initiatives. And I think uh, we have to see it uh, as a, with a holistic approach in the sense it's not just the company. Uh, we have involved most of our employees in this, uh, in this activity. And it's not only uh, the private donations, which are really significant, but also a very, very, very high participation in terms of volunteering to, to these initiatives. Uh, I think sustainability is a must for the future, but like all revolutions, you know, you don't go from today to tomorrow. And I think uh, I've been going around uh, our region for the last uh, 27 years. Uh, so, I mean, and uh, it's not the same as it was 15 years ago or 20. Uh, so it is a development. I think it will uh, accelerate uh, dramatically, especially with the pre pressure on uh, decarbonization and these sort of things where there will be a framework pressure to 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 invest in uh, in more uh, let's say renewable energy and so on and so forth uh, even uh, the visherad 4 we, we have been not so let's say not so prone to move into this direction i mean today in the czech newspaper uh, the state owned power um, generation company is uh, shutting down one of the biggest coal-fired uh, plants uh, in, in these days. So it is moving and it will move, but it will take also some time. And we need to be united in order to leverage on opportunities, learn, and the same applies uh, to product. If you allow me the jump, uh, you're right. Uh, you need numbers and you need the basis for calculations. Uh, and in this moment, for instance, we offered uh, to, uh, to, to some of our, uh, in most of our markets, a COVID extension for uh, corporate clients. And uh, we had to base our calculation on Italian experience because we didn't have any, otherwise any significant numbers to do any calculation. Otherwise, it would have been like a, a, a roulette or lottery. Okay. And the last, uh, before Michele shuts my microphone, he was already looking very threatening on the video, uh, on the on, uh, digitalization. Uh, Dario was right uh, to saying uh, slide of consultants, digitalization, in fact, everywhere. Uh, I think even my dog will start talking about uh, digitalization. But the reality is digitalization is a mean uh, is a tool to reach our clients in a different way because they want to be reached in a different way or they must be reached in a different way. And uh, unfortunately, especially consultants uh, tend to drive you in uh, something which is self-loving. Uh, self I think the key for the insurance industry is to combine mass products uh, like motor TPL, travel insurance, uh, must be fully simplified but most of our products, especially if we talk about uh, long-term care, health, where it's not only the insurance part, but you need a provider for services on top of the pure coverages, you need advice. You cannot do it without a proper advice. I think it's an illusion if we think we can put it on a portal and you read it and you do it yourself. So I think the big challenge is to combine, yes, digital processes, but also very much a combination of physical and remote advisory. I think there is the key for the industry to, to be. Very clear. I think Luciano has a... We lost. Yes, we, we lost you, but, but the message I think was, uh, was a pragmatic approach uh, to digital. Um, I think uh, the time is finished. Perhaps I sum up some uh, few concepts uh, by the session. Uh, so basically we had uh, um, the, the, the sense that this monetary policy is helping, but we come up with a high debt. High debt means maintaining low yields, but low yields, of course, is a pressure towards insurance. So that's why insurers should be very cautious on their capital, on their, on their assets, uh, uh, management in the in the future. There are these risks going on, so Italian debt, Italian risk, but also emerging market and of course uh, geographical and geopolitical frictions. There is the, the matter of liquidity for a different for different reasons, so surprising reasons, but 
At the end of the story, even if we have the inverted cycle of financing, insurance had the problem of derivatives, illiquid assets, to give liquidity to agencies, and eventually to clients to be part of the solution. That's why there's, there's a big issue in liquidity, which again put us against the uh, being having big shoulder to protect our clients in the future, especially in pandemic situation. And of course, uh, we should have models for pandemic and one solution, as Alfred clearly said, we have to act also with, uh, uh, with others, so with the reinsurers, uh, in order to, to start uh, moving things. And I think a big, big uh, uh, problem that Dario raises is why insurance, insurers don't have the same or almost the same uh, uh, approach to liquidity uh, from central banks, uh, given their role in managing savings of the population. So there's a big issue that I recognize too uh, with Dario in uh, having more access to the liquidity provided by central banks in, uh, in, uh, in uh, such circumstances like uh, uh, the COVID one. Uh, we heard that uh, it's not possible to, to, have, to, to speed up processes in, in digital or also in, uh, in capital. In, in, some, uh, in some cases, the, uh, for the time being, the, the, the market is, uh, is too young. So, I mean, there is a big, uh, I mean, we cannot make big steps. On the other side, uh, it's also true that uh, for the good of client, uh, we also have to, to bear in mind that capital and uh, is important. That's why also the minimum price is not <clears throat> goal that uh, uh, firms uh, should, uh, should have. So uh, in a nutshell, I think uh, uh, that was the, the main, uh, I forgot certainly some uh, issues, but uh, our time is definitely uh, Thank you, Michele. Thank you, Michele.